low system resource manager auto quality. Try closing some applications. I don't somebody, have applications. somebody's talking. Missy, can you start? Yes. And we need. Okay, can you hear me, Sandy? Sandy, you're muted. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, you need to be a little louder, honey. So okay. do your can plus on sound. Okay, can you hear me? That's a little better, but still. Okay, okay can hold, every on. hold on. Let me, okay, ah, okay, let me do this. Okay. That's better, there all we go. All right, it's amazing when you go to audio settings, what happens, <laughs> hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome you all to the PLC here at our Sunday morning at April 11th. We want to welcome all our visitors, our guests, and especially our newcomers. If you're a newcomer, we welcome you here with all our hearts. Uh, we're a community that uh, believes fully in, uh, in touching heart to heart, and we hope you come by and come back and see us again. Today, of course, is 11 April. As I mentioned, it's the year of manifestation. Our themes... Our themes for this month is God is not a failure, treatment and prayer works, and embody with faith of God. And now I invite you to relax, to settle back down, to take a breath, to focus on that God spark within your heart to mute yourself if you have your uh, microphone on and to listen just consciously and prayerfully to the music of Jim Savarino as we settle back into our meditation time. Mm -hmm. I went walking on a sunny morn Nothing on my mind Watched the new day born Among the trees I heard the river run Made my communion with the morning sun That morning sun that rises every day Imagine that sun in your heart, that warmth, that brightness, the spark of God, that consciousness that just flows through everything, all life, as it spreads out through you, for you, with you, and as you. This is who you truly are. Life made manifest. And as you breathe in the sun, the warmth, the consciousness of God's source itself, and anchor it, know that as you walk, as you talk, as you just be in this moment, that you are God in action. You are love itself. And so it is. And so we let it be so, and we allow it to be now. And so it is. Now we ask, the, ask Angie, the Reverend Angelo Pizzello, to do a spiritual thought for us this morning. 
<clears throat> thank you. I'm so blessed to have this opportunity to uh, speak to our spiritual family. I love you all. Focusing on these awesome, Sandy, you to be congratulated, these awesome themes. They're so appropriate for April. As we experience these uh, wintered months, we look forward to the rebirth and the renewal of nature. And what I feel is that this renewal and re rebirth exemplifies that first theme that says God never fails. This is the expression of God in our life, that it's an always present love energy that's there for us every moment of the, of the day. And uh, so as we uh, look at this idea of the renewal and the nature itself, we, we can say that it's a tremendous reminder to all of us who are and have been currently facing these challenges um, and physically and also uh, emotionally, uh, telling us that, uh, that this love nature shines through the darkness. Uh, and it's always there for us through the winter and that all we need to do is open our eyes up and accept. Uh, the shamanism really, uh, I thought about this this morning as in our talk uh, with Sandy and uh, you, Missy, that shamanism relates to this. And it's kind of interesting uh, looking at the ancients once in a while, going back many years, is that, uh, that in the winter, our hearts are in dormancy. Our hearts become dormant. And, and uh, it's almost like a restfulness. But then in the spring, the awakening uh, to a new life, a new experience, a new renewal. And this is an awesome metaphor for us uh, today as we experience uh, the challenges that we're facing. Uh, this love only energy, which we define as God is always present for us. And so our duty assignment will be to know that, 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 that as the shaman says, that it's always present for us. And when, it's, when he made that statement that it's dormant, what it means, it's kind of interesting, it's a great metaphor, is that when we face the darkness, we tend not to go to the heart, uh, the heart energy, the love energy, the love only. We tend to go to my, the mortal mind, to our thought processes. And through that thought processes, we start looking at the dark side. We look at fear, doubt, uh, anger, those kinds of issues. And so we shut out the light that can come through us. And so today, what I'd like to do is focus a little bit on that is that even in the darkness, that this ever present light is always there ready for us. All we have to do is be open and receptive to it. I like to call it uh, clean, cleansing our uh, thought atmosphere. Um, and just as another, I'm a metaphor nut, but uh, a lampshade. Uh, uh, can be covered with dust to the point where the light cannot shine through. And so the challenge that Angelo faces, and all of us do, because we've been there, done that, and we're doing it right here now, that that challenge of life itself poses for all of us is to cleanse the dross, like the dross, the garbage, the stuff that we're thinking about, the preconceived notions and, and the false perceptions that bring us doubt, fear, and ugliness. And, and so that's our duty assignment here, so that that light can come within full display. It's kind of interesting on these themes, uh, Sandy, I'm just happy that you brought it up, like uh, prayer and the idea that, uh, that prayer treatment uh, is called treatment. Many people coming to us, they, they're really confused. I know uh, I've experienced it where a Catholic or Lutheran or people from a, a fundamental Christian, they say, Andrew, why do you call it treatment? I, we call it, in my belief system, we call it prayer. And what we try to explain is that our idea of prayer is not a begging, a pleading for something that everything we ever need is always a present. In fact, we, try, we don't even use the word need very much in New Thought because we have no needs. We're eternal spiritual beings that are fully equipped to handle this drama, whether it's dark or light or whatever you may call it, it's all good because all the good that comes through us is, is, is experience in darkness as well. We've used that metaphor that through the, if the sky is not dark enough, you can't see the stars. What's well, the same thing? So we're here that it's all good and it's all God. And, and so our prayer treatment, the reason, reason we use treatment is that we need to work on the consciousness to clear the cobwebs, to clear the dross, so that we can have the flow of this eternal presence that's there for us. And that's why we call it prayer treatment, that we're trying to do that. It's kind of neat. Uh, as we know, as I said, everything is already present for us. So clearing the dross is important. 
Another thing that we talked about was this idea of faith, embodying faith in, in our human uh, beingness and uh, embodying faith of God, uh, faith with God. Boy, is this, a, this is a handle for all of us. Because if we are not using the idea of faith, what is faith? It's, it's not complex. Faith is not accepting an appointing, a, 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 a different point of view, an opposing point of view. That's what faith is. So when I'm out here facing the darkness in the winter of, the, of my life, faith is knowing that I will not accept it as a negative. Faith is accepting what is, the isness, the I am, the love only of all that there is. That's faith. And so many of us now need to reestablish the idea in our awareness that we are experiencing the, the darkness. And rather than uh, anger and faith, uh, anger and uh, disagreement, uh, uh, just get rid of that abuse of our consciousness and allow that the flow of our greater is always there. So, so God is never making a mistake. It's always there for us. And all we need to do during this month is be open in awareness to everything that happens to us, benefits us in some way. And that uh, our duty assignment then is to focus on the good. Because if we focus on the negative, my philosophy is if you want to find the negative, you'll find it. You'll find anything that you want to find. If you want to see the good in all, you'll find it. In our belief system, we know that that which we uh, put our minds to expresses itself in our life. So if I put my thoughts to, and the great Buddha, I love the, the Buddha, and what he said was, we're thinking too darn much. Stop thinking, just start being. We need to be that oneness. And so thank you for allowing me to, you know, do my Pazelloisms. God bless you. Thank you, Angie. It's a, you remind me of Dumbledore in a lot of ways, you know. He says, in the darkest of nights, all you have to do is switch on the light. And... Uh, whenever I hear you talk on spiritual thought, it always switches on the light for me and in uh, some of the ways I think. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Jim Savarino, would you please bless us with some more of your wonderful music? Oh, thanks for having me today. Wait, wait a moment, I can't see where I am bound, and I question what's before me, all the answers I have found, something new is beginning, something old is on the run, and I lost what I was winning in the early morning sun. Dragonfly moving swiftly just above a misty lake while a mouse hides discreetly from the falcon and the snake. Seasons pass Death and birthing meet the turning of the year And the sun keeps on burning Wonder if the sun can hear Gather up the faithful, the forgotten and the lost We are marching to oblivion a new age Pentecost. There 
as a song in the springtime when her fingers lose their grip while the dear and funny babe find sweet waters they can sip here i stand in the city nature seems a distant dream but i'm holding to a vision sunny sky and crystal stream gather up the faithful the forgotten and the lost we are marching to oblivion and new age and take Thank you so much, Jim. I think of Pentecost and the, and the Spirit of God descending upon us and bringing us the Spirit of God consciousness and just enlightening us and bringing us the, that feeling of, of God descending upon us and enlightening us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our program speakers today, speaking of enlightenment, the Reverend Bob Han and John Lalonde. John and Bob will be talking, will be telling a story about seeking enlightenment. Bob will tell the story in words, and John will interpret the story in music. Life was good. <clears throat> the days just slipped by. I was constantly busy with my family, my job, social activities. I didn't have any time for deeper thoughts about life or religion. Then a close friend of mine died in an accident. Things broke down around the house and repairs started putting a big drain on our finances. I got very sick for a while, adding to our debt and causing me to miss an opportunity for a big promotion at work. My life seemed to go from smooth to chaotic. I started to question the uninspired, vague religious beliefs I had held and began wondering what life was really about and what was my true relationship to the divine. I wasn't finding any meaningful answers though, and I just bounced from one belief to the next. <laughs> Eventually, I heard someone saying that there was a path on a nearby mountain that led to a pure, bright light that would illuminate my soul and grant me enlightenment. <clears throat> but I was warned, the path was not easy, and it was filled with illusions that could lead me astray. 
Many people I knew warned me against attempting this path. Some said that the path was really a scam and it would just lead me in circles and keep me from dealing with the real world of business and social standing. Others said the path was real, but only true saints could hope to ascend to the top and find the light. I certainly wasn't a saint, but I thought that even the effort was a worthy goal. So I prepared myself and headed for the mountain. It was easy to see why people had warned me against trying to climb this mountain. Its sides were steep and overgrown with thick vegetation. I could also see numerous fissures breaking up the sides that could easily lead one to sharp cliffs at any spot along the trail. As I got closer, there were a lot of people hanging around giving <clears throat> advice on how to make it to the top. Just at the start of the trail, there was an area with dried mud and numerous footprints. A woman in a long, colorful robe was there, pointing out various footprints. This one is Jesus. This one, Buddha. This one is Lao Tse. She went on and named mystics and prophets from many different religions. I was particularly intrigued when she pointed to one, not made by bare feet or sandals, but by dress shoes. This one is Einstein, she said. Then she continued, you can follow them almost to the top, but you'll have to find your own path at the end. And a word of caution, they all had disciples. Many disciples' footprints will look just like the master's, but they may go astray from the true path. With this input, <clears throat> I felt I was ready to go quickly to the top and reach enlightenment. I was a little nervous, but filled with hope. was beautiful. The slope was gentle, and yet I could quickly tell that I had made progress, and I was already higher than I had ever been. What struck me immediately, though, was the beauty of everything I saw. It was all new and exciting. It was a lush forest with exotic birds and animals glimpsed through every bush and tree. I totally lost myself in wonder. I was really enjoying myself, but then I realized that I should make sure that I was still on the right track. I looked at the path for footprints, but there were dozens of them and I couldn't be sure which were the ones I should be following. I started to panic a little until I saw a man walking by with several people following him. I asked someone who he was and they assured me that he was a true master who was leading people to the light. So I joined in and followed him. We were all having fun and enjoying the trip when we came to a cliff. He pointed up where we had a clear view of a bright light. It was pure and beautiful, but it was still a long way off. How do we get to the light, I asked. You don't, he said. Only the masters actually get to the light. His followers all gathered around him and gazed up in wonder. 
but I wanted more and turned back. <laughs> I found a trail with footprints that looked like the Buddha's and followed it. But it got narrower and narrower, narrower, and it was surrounded by briars with sharp thorns that kept poking me. So I turned and went back. I found another with footprints that I thought were the Christ. It looked like it was going steeply up, and I was encouraged. But it turned and then seemed to be going in circles, and it led into a thick fog. I finally turned back again. Was it time for me to give up and return to a life that was full, but had no higher meaning? <laughs> I got back to the main trail and stopped to think. I had immersed myself in the beauty and just followed whatever lead seemed good. Those attempts had certainly raised me up, but I wasn't getting any higher. It occurred to me that following the footprints of one mystic might still lead me astray. But if I could find a trail where they all went, it must surely be right. It wasn't an easy task. I had to really focus to make out the true master's prints and totally myself, <clears throat> discipline myself to go only on the path where they all stayed together. <clears throat> the path wasn't easy. It was often steep. It crossed hard packed dirt where following footprints took focused concentration. Trails often crossed it, so I had to continually ensure I kept to the true path. And then I was shocked. The trail ended. There was a deep chasm, but I couldn't tell how wide it was because there was a thick fog on the other side. The one pure light made the fog glow, so I knew I must be close, but how was I to continue? <clears throat> Then I looked down and there was a brass plaque on a rock beside the trail. I could barely make it out. I had to push aside some branches and rub off some dirt. Obviously not many people had been here before. When I finally got it clear, I read, this is the end of the path that we all take together. You used your mind and your focused thoughts to stay on the path and reach this point. Across the chasm are the separate paths that each individual must take. You must use your heart and your intuition to follow that path. To get to it, you need only leap across the chasm. That was all it said, until I looked down at a sentence written in very small type at the bottom of the edge of the plaque. It said, but make sure you are ready before you leap. 
Was I ready? How would I know? I tried to look into my inner self, but was I seeing what was there or what I wanted to see? Then I thought about my journey up the path, all that I had seen, the difficulties they had overcome, and the beauty I had experienced. I thought of the wisdom I had learned along the way. I had started just letting my enthusiasm carry me, but found that approach raised me up, but not as high as I wanted to go. When that approach could lead me no higher, I thought things through and decided to follow only the path where all the religious leaders went, where the greatest scientists went knowing that that path had to contain the true essence of all of their wisdom. I disciplined myself to not stop where others stopped, but instead to keep going until I knew absolutely that I had gone as far as any teaching could take me. And all of that now brought me to this place. Was I ready? I didn't know. But I had made this long journey, I had learned so much, and I wasn't going to give up now. Before I could think about it anymore, I took two quick steps and jumped. Wow. <laughs> I have no words. Thank you. Thank you. That and I have to particularly uh, compliment uh, John. He just put a tremendous amount of effort into this interpretation, getting the right sounds. He really uh, excelled. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, thank you, Bob. You know, before we started, we were talking about old shows that we had seen. And doing this reminded me of the Dobie Gillis show. Mm -hmm. I just felt like a, beat, a beatnik. <laughs> well, you remind me of Peter and the Wolf when we were growing up. Huh. You know, you told, had the story and then it had, had, the, had the flute and different instruments where, where it kind of followed the story and just enhanced. And, and that was really neat. I was, I was riveted. I wanted to know what was next. And, uh, and it was like, oh, he leaped, yes, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so thank you, Bob. That was, that was just such a great way to, to uh, tell the story. And, and so many of our, our truths are told through stories and, uh, and such a great way to bring the tradition forward. Thank you. And now for our offertory. Uh, please, uh, uh, you know, say, I was going to say sing along with me to the offertory, but please uh, uh, say the offertory with me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. And in the chat box, I've put where you can uh, send your donations to PLC PO Box 2683 Oakhurst, California. Or you can give by PayPal via the green Donate Now tab shown on the Weekly Positive Living Center Bulletin. 
And this is my favorite part because uh, through donations, uh, you know, we bless our tithes and what we give comes back to us multiplied. So that's, it's, it's a really lovely way of, um, of spirituality. Our practitioner of the day is Revelant, is Revelant, is Reverend, the very irreverent Reverend Angie, Angelo Pizzello. So he's our practitioner for the day. So if you need any treatment, please get hold of Angie. Uh, he's at 559-658-1433. Are there any other, uh, any other announcements? Just raise your hand uh, or, and un unmute yourself if you have any announcements. I have one. Okay. Um, Marilyn completed her radiation treatments Tuesday. Oh, yay. Yeah, pain is subsiding and she's feeling much better. And uh, she won't know for six weeks um, what her prognosis going forward is. Uh, but um, we uh, appreciate everybody's prayers and we envision uh, nothing less than uh, complete remission for her. And uh, she sends her love to all you guys. Uh. Well, thank you. Send her love back. Send our love back to her. And we will know her perfection and know that uh, uh, all is well with her in divine order. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to remind everybody of the, um, of the PLC outreach, Heart to Heart, that if there are any life's transitions, they are wanting, I, and I put it into the chat box. So we have a team. And if, um, if you need anybody to talk to, request prayer work or any other needs you might uh, have, uh, we have created a new way of being together in community. So that is in the chat box. Are there any other announcements? I have one. Okay. We have, uh, we're wrapping up our class, our 12 week class. Um, and uh, center, that was the centering in and centering up in consciousness and we're going to be uh, having a new class in two weeks starting on the 25th of april and it will be spiritual economics uh using the book spiritual economics by eric butterworth um so if that's a favorite that you've enjoyed in the past and would like to join this class please or if you, it's new to you please uh, you're welcome i hope you'll let us know i will get it out in the weekly email so that you can uh, register if you'd like Great. Thank you, LJ. Any other announcements? Oh, uh, Marissa? Please unmute yourself, sweetie. There Thank we you. go. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I know that while I was quickly showering that Joe <laughs> um, expressed deep thanks for everyone's prayers and thoughts. Um, as his caregiver, I want to thank Judy uh, De Rosa and um, and and our and our close friends as well, um, John and and Joyce, uh, John Lalonde and Joyce and others. Um, what I'm wanting to could you hand me a Kleenex because I'm going to cry. <laughs> what I'm wanting to say is thank you so much in having faith when um, my prayers and and beliefs were a little shaken with Joe um, because in 40 years, this is the sickest, only time he's ever gotten sick, and this sick. And so um, I thank you for carrying me um, in, in your prayers when I wasn't necessarily feeling I could carry both of us. And with your help, we did. And I know that he's uh, told you he's fully recovered, which is something I didn't see necessarily. So three months later, I thank you all. And I thank Judy so much uh, from the depths of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. I'm going to get tearful. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute. <laughs> you know, Marissa, one thing that Reverend Sandy always told me was that when we needed, needed it, and, and we have spiritual mind treatment, that 
uh, we can hang on to someone else's coattails that, oh. you know, it's, it's that that's what spiritual mind treatment, having the ministers, the practitioners and the, and the community is for us that sometimes we just need to, to hold on to someone else's coattails just to, uh, because we can't do it in that moment for ourselves. And that's okay. That's what heart to heart is for. And so thank you for, um, for being part of our community and just being there with us heart to heart. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other um, uh, announcements? Okay. Well, join me in our prayer of protection, please. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. The energy of God is me. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Reverend Sandy, could you close us out today, please, with a, with a prayer? Yes, and first, I just want to thank everyone who presented today. I mean, it just gets better and better and better. And just the ways of interpreting and the ways of sharing how music works, how story works. It's just beautiful to learn all the different ways and that we don't all have to be alike, that we come together in our diversity. And know with me, please, that this coming together is the true experience of God's source. This unification, this beingness, it's about presence, about us. And it is so important that we understand it. It is not ego. It is truth. It is about us. Each and every one of us is important. The world is a better place because each and every one of us is here. God is more enhanced as we know each more aspect, each more facet of who and what we are. Our journeys are worthwhile. So as you have those dark nights of the soul and they come, reach out and let someone else help you. Reach out and let a hand lift you up. Reach out in prayer and know that you are loved and supported every step of the way. We are all important. We come together in unification. We come together to be able to transcend into the beauty of bliss, into the beauty of source. And I accept and know all of this for all of us. I give thanks for all we are and all we are becoming. And say with me, please. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. It's been a great day. Yeah. Looking forward to next week to seeing you again. Yeah, Reverend Kim yes. Paley is next is our speaker next week. Hey, Kimmy, that'll be fun. And Kim, unmute yourself. Yeah. Are you are you time. still are you still going to do the little different thing you were going to do? um everything you know like it's going to be different <laughs> that's good that's good we like that 